This is what it is all about. It is uh, the culmination of what has been a massive AFL season. Uh, and all thanks to our wonderful sponsor, Palmer Bet. Uh, in the pocket is the show that you have been watching all year, and I'm looking forward to getting this man's thoughts on the big grand final. It is Collingwood taking on the Brisbane Lions. Spider, you live in enemy territory up there, kind of close enough to Brisbane on the Gold Coast, mate. What's the feeling like up there in uh, in Bris Vegas? I tell you what, you are up and about. You're standing. Aren't uh-huh. we all so excited? But yeah, look. You know, the feeling is, of course, the uh, Brisbane is just the northern suburb of the Gold Coast. So there really are the <laughs> Gold Coast Brisbane, Brisbane Lions because, you know, back in the day, Brisbane Lions used to play most of their home games at Carrara on the Gold Coast. So, yep. you know, we do uh, hold a very special place in their heart, but it is. You know, we've been lucky enough. If you Honestly, when you think about Brisbane, if you follow sport, we've got the Brisbane Lions, we've got the Brisbane Broncos. So massive. yeah, in the NRL, it is massive for the uh, for the town. If they both win, it will be amazing. It would be absolutely unbearable the the Brisbaneites. But <laughs> you know what? We got to concentrate on the AFL, and you know, it's been a, a big week so far. Big week so far. Spot. I want to get your thoughts. Lockie Neal uh, taking out the Brownlow Medal. Uh, I don't think a lot of people, and I think even Lockie, uh, probably admit, uh, you know, he probably didn't think he had a, a Brownlow Medal winning season. What did you think about the can? I must admit, I th- I loved it. I thought it was close. I know there's a lot of people talking about, you know, should people have got votes on certain games? That's what makes the Brownlow so special and so different for mine. Yeah, look, and look, you can argue either way. And as you say, it was close. It was great. Lockie Neal didn't have the best, yeah, his greatest Brownlow year. And that's that's the only thing that gets me is I still believe if you ask all the punters out there and, you know, Palmer Bet, whatever, you know, the biggest Quinella was was Dave Coss and the Bond. And I thought the Bond personally had the best year. Yeah, I thought he deserved the Brownlow. And then, yeah, of course, you're going to go back and look at, at votes. And we can't determine it. It's been done like this for, for for decades. I like the way it's done. Could they actually get like a media personality, like a caller? It doesn't matter if it's from yeah. Fox, from Seven, from 3RW, from Triple M, whatever it is, just one person a game to go, these would have been my top five. You guys choose whatever you reckon, but these are our reasons why. Spy, do you just- reckon like... Four umpires for the first time this year. Do you reckon that had an impact at all? You got to get four blokes, I suppose, instead of three. Um, thinking about the same kind of players. I, I just think it's you know umpires are becoming under more scrutiny. They're going to know all the players. You know, there's so many different legislations coming in about too high and and concussion and this and that. They've got so much more on their plate rather than trying to find out who's playing the best brand of football. Very yeah. difficult for umpires to be able to do that. Just go on to the days, if you've got two umpires, you see 90% of the play. At the moment, a lot of the umpires, like, you know, only one umpire's calling it, the other one's yeah. a little bit watching it, the other two are watching what's going on behind play. So, yeah. you know, it's. I just think it's a different uh, ball game now. So I reckon they just need a little bit of help from people that actually watch and study that game each and every day. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I, I must admit, Dacos was brilliant. You know, like, what a season. Second yeah. uh, second year in the AFL. Zach Butter is exactly the same, mate. He had a magnificent season. What about your man at the Swans, Goulden? He was unbelievable. He polled so well, especially in those final nine or ten rounds, Spot. And this is what we're going to love. You know, we've seen the years of, you know, the, the Bont and, you know, these guys win Dangerfield and these guys winning uh, Brownlows. And now it's going to go to the next generation of, you know, Dacos, Goulden, Noah Anderson, uh, Matt Rao, Welsh in, in at Carlton. Um, you know, so there's a whole new generation that are going to be fighting it out for the next five or six years, get a couple of brown lows, and then of course the next generation will come through. So exciting times. I enjoyed the night. I thought it's still still good, plays its role. But yeah, I just bit flat the bond. Yeah, I'm a bit. I reckon the Bond had a cracking year too. Uh, you know, and I, I even reckon I reckon Petrarca was stiff late. A couple of those games, uh, you know, he was he was pretty yeah. important uh, late in games, kick goals at important times. I just don't know whether a lot of that stuff gets uh, or comes into play at times. Now I've got an interesting stat for your spot. I've done a little bit yep. of research uh, earlier today. So out of the last twenty three AFL uh, Grand Finals, ten players have been involved in Grand Final Day. So 10 winners over that okay. journey. Four of them have won premierships in that year. So uh, uh, Black um, is yep, Simon one. Black. Simon Black is one. Acker. Acker Manus is another. 
Um, Jimmy Bartel is one. No, Mitchell was in a uh, no, no, not in a no. uh, in a premiership year. Uh, Bartel and Dusty Martin was the fourth. Okay, and then there's only one player out of those four that then won a Norm Smith in the same year. Can you tell me who that is? Dusty, the Dusty man, mate. But the other two, there's two others, Black and Bartel, have won Norm Smiths not in their Brownlow winning years. So that's no, nor, uh, Bartel won it in 2011 because I had backed him yes. and I was at the Denny Ute Muster and I was very excited. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Mate, I know why you're at the Denny Ute Muster, big fella. You are the biggest rev head going around. Oh, oh. Nice you back in the day in the old Utes uh, lining up the streets of Melbourne. Righto, let's, uh, let's have a look back at last week, prelim finals, yep. of course. It was a cracking game Friday night, played in front of 97,500 people. One point, the Pies lost the year before to the Swannies by one point. They go one point better. It was one for the ages, Spy. The atmosphere was electric, but what about the Orange Tsunami? They were enormous, and I must admit, I'll be interested to get your thoughts, mate. I thought they got the uh, the wrong rub of the, uh, the umpires, uh, especially in that last quarter. Yeah, look, they were stiff. Absolutely, they were stiff. And, uh, you know, they did everything right. They had Collingwood on their knees. They just knew what they need to do. And it wasn't, you know, when Toby Green kicked the first, you thought, all right, they're on here. They're into, into something special. But, you know, you look at all the different elements of that game and, you know, Dugowie was fantastic. Like, he's probably one of yeah, his best huge. games he's played. And then, you know, McStay stands up when he, he really needed to stand up as a forward. And, you know, I just, I loved every element of it. I just thought, actually, but halfway through the third quarter, I actually really thought, gee, I don't reckon Collingwood can get back here. You know, the, oh, I was with just you, mate. really yep. good. I just thought just doing enough to keep themselves yeah, in front of Collingwood. And then as they do, Collingwood just, yeah, it's just at the right side, at the right time. When the siren goes, they're at the right side of the ledger. So, yeah, it was, it was, I, I found it a cracking game. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't high scoring. End up, you know, opening up towards the uh, the back end of the game, especially the second half. But the first half, it was very, very tight. Well, I reckon the big the big stories to come out. Dacos returns. He had twenty eight disposals. He's, yeah. he's just an absolute jet. To go, as you just mentioned, thirty four and sat the last eight minutes. They couldn't get him back on the ground, which was unbelievable. Um, twenty five for Pendlebury. Side bottom was enormous early. Had uh, twenty four. Um, you know, like their stars stood up, didn't they? For the Tommy boys. Mitchell. Tommy Mitchell. Tommy getting Mitchell. His head, head over the ball in and under. Yep. Like he's he's the man for them as well. And then. Yeah, you, know, you go to the other side of GWS. Gee, they've built a, a really good football club, haven't they? Oh, mate. They have really built a I, I solid... Ran into, um, I ran into Leon Cameron. I had a couple of beers with Camo. Uh, he was back home here in Warrnambool over the weekend, and uh, uh, he calls the footy now for uh, for SEN and stuff like that. Yeah. And I said, what would you make, you know, a Friday night? I said, you must be... I said, it must be hard as a coach to sit back and, and I suppose, watch a team you've had so much to do with. And he was he was wrapped. He was full of praise. And, uh, you know, I think he's just delighted to see the club on, on an upward spiral, um, you know. And and and, and I, I love that, you know, if you know what I mean. Like, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and, you know, the Gold Coast Suns can take a lot away from them because they've yep. just done remarkable in what they've been able to do. You think now they've got a, a, an off-season to, you know, they get drag two or three players from other clubs, and they will because they should be playing in a grand final. They are not that far off. No, I'm rating them. And don't forget, they started the year seven and three. Yeah, that's or right. Or three mate. and seven or whatever yeah. you know I mean. Like, yeah, amazing. They were right behind the eight ball. Like, yeah, the nines are out. Quarter, yep, and then they've uh, just come back. So, yeah, for me, I thought they, they had a, probably the team of the year so far. Hey, mate, what about uh, Saturday afternoon's game? Uh, I, I, I must oh. admit, I was calling local footy and uh, looked at the score and, and saw the score line, uh, 32 to 2 at one stage. And I'm thinking, here we go. The blue baggers are up and about. But the quality of Brisbane really shone through, didn't it? They they lifted it up a notch, Spy, yeah. and they're good players. They're forwards, they're key forwards, Charlie Cameron, um, you know, Hipwood, Danaher. They all provided when they needed to, and I think that is a sign of a really good side. There's a, there's a bit of belief there. I know they've got the MCG hoodoo they've got to deal with this weekend, but there's a real belief for that Brisbane outfit, I reckon, this year. I think the belief comes from their back line. At that first yes. quarter, you're talking 30-2, to two, and then suddenly, you know, um, you know uh, they cut, uh, Brisbane kick a goal to get it down to you know twenty five odd points. But what got me here was they had twenty two to eight inside fifties. Brisbane's defensive, like you've got a very potent Carlton four line. Brisbane's defence held up. Yeah, they yeah. might have kicked five. They could have kicked ten. They had twenty two inside fifties. Like they were on track for eighty eight. But just the way they had done it, and 
I just thought their defence, Brisbane's defence, kept them in the game, and they knew if they just didn't, if they didn't get that one before quarter time, I reckon it'd be a whole different mindset. They go into quarter time with a bit of confidence. They come out and say, you know what? We kick the next goal. We're only three goals down. We kick the next one. We're only twelve points down. So then they were able to really build on yeah. that. And you know, as you mentioned, then suddenly the midfield because the midfield got spanked. They got absolutely spanked that first twenty minutes. Carlton looked like they were on song. They were unbelievable. And then you know, slowly turning, you know, Brisbane were able to turn it on and then give their forwards all the opportunities they needed and won out comfortable. How do you rate Carlton season, Spider? And in particular, the final series of Charlie Kerno. A bit of spotlight on Charlie. He had a, a fantastic year winning the Coleman, of course, uh, again. Well, what's your what's your take on the Blues? What do they need to take well, the next level? I was talking to another guy, and he told me an interesting stat, and we're into stats, and we love them. 30 of his goals, have, I mean, 30% of his goals have come from free kicks. Now, the umpires put the whistle away during the uh, finals, which is great. Yep. yep. So did he get caught out a little bit? We don't yeah. know. But, you know, we want big players to play well in big games. But I still thought Carlton's year, you've got to give him an A. I thought for them to be able to rebound and do what they're able to do and beat, you know, just remember when right back when they, you know, beat Fremantle or West Coast over there and everyone's going, oh, yeah. Then they beat Collingwood, Port Adelaide and Geelong all back to back to back. It was unbelievable. And then yeah. they come into a final series. Yeah, they just scrape over the line. You know what? They scraped over the line. Collingwood's been doing it for two years, and they're you know they're still a powerhouse that are playing off in a grand final. So I like their year. I think it will lead them into a really good preseason and, and a lot of faith next year. And I'd um you know the the Blues faithful will be just absolutely on that bandwagon big time next year. They can't afford to have the same start next year as they had this year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the blue bag is going to be up and about. I reckon it's going to be an interesting two spot. I reckon both teams, like Collingwood, both winning teams, Collingwood and Brisbane, I thought they both looked like they were out of a bit of gas, uh, you know, in that final 10 or 15 minutes. Like Carlton were kind of coming again against the Lions, weren't they? And, yeah. and I reckon Collingwood were out in their feet. So, um, you know, 28 degrees expected at the MCG this weekend. It is going to be a warm one. A lot of people saying that's going to favour the Brisbane Lions because they're used to that heat. Um, you know, what's your thoughts? What's your take on not that? Not really. We're coming off winter. Okay, we're not as cold as you guys, but we still haven't played in 27. And Melbourne 27 is a bit different to the Brisbane 27. So it is going to be absolute Mickey Mouse, perfect conditions for football. It's going to be a great atmosphere. It's exactly what we want. You cannot get a better day. And when you're leading in from Kiss to the Holy Grail with Mark Seymour into Mike Brady with up there, Gazali, we are going to be up and about. There's no doubt about it. But I, I think both teams should be out on their feet. This is it. This is this is everything all or nothing. I find that the first half of this game is going to be tight. It's going yep. to open up that second half. It's going to be a pretty high-scoring game because, as you say, a lot of guys are going to be out on their feet and it's going to be that gut running that's going to win games. We'll yeah, win nah. this game. It's going to be an absolute ripper, Spide. Now, listen, uh, lots of functions happening in Melbourne. Lots of functions, no doubt, up on the Gold Coast, mate. Uh, how many cashies uh, have you got done? <laughs> Seriously, what are you doing this week, big fella? So, no, you'd be just loading your pockets up on tipping, big fella. Absolutely speaking not. Speaking arrangements text. everywhere. To the tax man and to my wife, everything is all above board. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we've got a heap. And this is what I, this is what I love about Brilliant. football. And this is what I love about, you know, you, you can compare it to any other code or any other sport around the world. And Melbourne do it so well. You know, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have dinners, and you have them all, the, you know, all over the country you have them. But Melbourne are a real central piece. And we know, you know, all the different kinds of clubs that have been have, having traditional lunches or dinners for 30, 40, 50 years around the AFL Grand Final. Awesome. And it is so good. And they get all their guest speakers and you got the comedians, you got everyone on the juice, everyone enjoying it and having a uh, a great time. Everyone trying to pick the winner. And then you head there on the Saturday morning with the North Melbourne breakfast. And then you head to the uh, MCG and, you know, you got Manicano steaks on a Friday night as well on the racing. It, it's mate. just such a great weekend of football. Even just, you know, the Friday, the parade and, Everybody that gets involved in that, so I just think they do it remarkably well. So it is a good, it's a good place to be in Melbourne this week. Now, I'm actually heading to the Moya Stakes Friday night, big fella, and then uh, to the Gina. You're coming down as well, big fella. You're heading to the football on Saturday, um, and and you know. <laughs> 
it's hard because uh, for people that haven't experienced the grand final day, and uh, we're lucky, Spy, we have experienced a few yeah. ourselves. Um, you know, it's it's just it is awesome. Just that feeling, the, the the whole town is alive. Everyone's a buzz. There's anticipation, and uh, it's exciting to be there, isn't it? Oh, it is. And you know, for me, I always tell my young fella, you know, really appreciate it. Walk across Make the, the bridge, of it. Yep. see the fans, see the crowd, see what it means to people as you're walking around and you got all, as I said, you got all the different radio stations and all the television networks yeah, and it's brilliant. everybody broadcasting live. You got all this entertainment there, everybody dressed up with their colors and you go in there and, you know, I just thought the welcome to country was the best one I've seen uh, up in uh, Carlton versus Brisbane. When they when they continued on and did the Aussie Aussie yep. Aussie oi 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 remarkable and just the atmosphere around there around the pregame and the welcome to country then the national anthem and the bounce of the ball it's just like brilliant there's, there's just not a moment like it no nah, not I'm in our you. game we grow up in our game and we I know there's all these other sports but this is the game we love and just that moment that ball is bounced it's like that is it. And 28 degrees, spot. Honestly, like oh. it is, uh, it's going to be one for the ages. Righto, let's get straight into a big fella because everybody hanging on uh, your thoughts heading into the big one this Saturday at the MCG. 2.30 kickoff, of course. Yeah. Head to head, all thanks to Palmer Bet, the Collingwood Football Club. They're at a dollar seventy-five. Brisbane at two dollars ten at the line. It's a tight line. Collingwood minus four and a half a dollar ninety. Brisbane plus four and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Now Brisbane won both games this year against the Pies, one hundred and twenty-four wow. to one hundred in round twenty-three at Marvel Stadium, and one hundred and sixteen to eighty-three in round four at the Gabba. In round twenty-three game, the Pies didn't have Nick Dacos, Bobby Hill. Darcy Moore and Jordan Degoe. So a four-goal loss there. Gee, I reckon there's four goals there for the for the Collingwood Football Club. And on a streak, the Lions have won their last six straight games against the Pies dating back to 2020. There is that MCG hoodoo that yes. will come out for the rest of this week and there'll be a massive big talking point. Chris Fagan, he's just deflecting it beautifully well at the moment. What is your take on that first and foremost, on that MCG coming down here, Biggest yep. game of the year, Spide. Uh, the Lions just haven't played well at the G. They were close uh, six weeks ago against Melbourne. I reckon they should have won that game, and the monkey would have been well and truly off the back then. Yeah, I put it down to this. I thought last week was a great template into getting into this game, only because they were challenged at home at the time. They went in there, they readdressed things, and they said, you know what? We need to do this ourselves. And they were able to claw themselves back. If they were five goals up at quarter time, I'll be looking, you know, Brisbane were and they went in to win eight to ten goals. I'll be looking at this differently. I just thought that challenge at quarter time will set them up at MCG. Now, watched, we've spoken about their defence. I think Brisbane's defence is the best in the competition. Yep. I think Collingwood's four line without McStay has probably got a hole in it. Yeah, they'll yeah. have to play big cocks yeah. there. I, I want to get your thoughts on that because McStay, he kicked a couple early last week, but he he just provides that vacuum, doesn't he? You know, he leads yeah. up at the football. He creates that space behind. He is going to be a massive loss for the Pies. He is. And then you, you, you're you sliding big Mason Cox there. So Cameron's got a bit more of a duty in the ruck work. Yeah. 27 degrees. You know, starting to feel it. So Brisbane's got the best defence at the moment. And Collingwood's yeah. having – their four line's probably their weakness. Yep. Get, get towards the midfield, and I think they're 50-50. Yeah. Colin was probably just a little bit in front, I'd say. But, yep. you know, you're talking a gun midfield either side. Well, so the there's not much in it. Yep. And you, McInerney, who's able to get forward, kick goals, so hurting the opposition. And then you go Collingwood's back line on Brisbane's forward line. Yep. That's 50-50. They're yep. both guns. Great back line, great forward line. So if you look at it over the ground, Brisbane's probably just got an advantage if you look right over the ground, because of their defensive strength. That's how I look at it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and know, I, reckon, as... I reckon on the flip side, mate, I actually reckon you, you just said Brisbane have got the, the number one defence of the comp. I actually reckon they nearly got the number one forward line too. They're just so yeah. potent. There's so many dangerous options up there. You know, if Charlie gets fired up and Joe Denner, who has a day out in those conditions, Hipwood can play. Um, you know, there's 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 so much on offer there for the for the Brisbane Lions faithful lot. I'm I'm a little bit with you, Spot. I tend to feel like you're leaning towards the Brisbane Lions here, and I'm I'm exactly the same. 
Well, don't forget too. I think with Brisbane too, they've got players that can shut down other players. You know, they'll they'll have run with roles. So Dacos, you know, if you hit, you know, Dacos is their main man. Yeah, but and if you look Dun- at last now, week, is Dacos, Dacos is and Dago. Is Dunkley going to go to Dacos or will he go to Dagoe? What do you reckon? I reckon he'll probably go to Dagoe and then yep. you'll have a McCartney or somebody like that because, yep. that, you know, that will probably go to a Dacos because you've got to be up, able to run him down. But they've always got him in the back pocket, you know what I mean, in their yep. back pocket to be able to go and do. But, you know, just the Quainor on Charlie Cameron, like yeah. just some of the setups is going to be remarkable. Darcy Moore on Danaher. Um, you know, you can go through the whole lot, but I just sit there and go, okay, where's this? Where's this? And defense is normally wins, and I just reckon Brisbane's defense is just a fraction better at this stage. Yep. I don't reckon I'm not going to buy into the 13 games never won at the MCG. Yeah. I reckon if you if they kick the first, if Danaher kicks the first, it is going to be showtime. Yeah. And, and, and Spy, the other thing too I think needs to come into play, and I was talking to a couple of folks about this uh, earlier on in the week, um, you know, like the last couple of weeks, Collingwood have had you know, 90,000 Collingwood supporters there. They're not yep. going to have that bigger support because it just doesn't happen like that on grand final. I remember Richmond in 2017, we had such a huge final series. There was yep. only about kind of 35, 40,000, I reckon, Richmond supporters you know, true diehards that actually end up getting tickets. So you do lose that little bit of home ground kind of, yeah. uh, you know, crowd factor, which is worth a couple of goals, isn't it? Well, it's going to be 50-50 because, let's be honest, if you don't bear it for Collingwood, most people hate them. So yeah, they're going to go, they go for the opposite. Brisbane. That's just, yeah. just natural, even if it is Brisbane. So, you know, the, I don't think, you know, that's going to play much of a role. There's going to be a lot of Brisbane fans. We know how big they've been. You know, they they, you know, they had such a successful time in the early 2000s. So, look, it's going to be a massive game. But for me, I'm going to stick with Brisbane. I reckon they can uh, get over the line. By how much? Look, I yeah, three or four goals, um, which seems like a lot, but... You come, you know, come grand final, three-quarter time, and, you know, if they're up by a couple, I reckon they'll uh, continue on. I reckon, um, you know, if I'm looking at a Norm Smith, I'm probably going – I've been I've been a massive McCluggage fan all day. Yeah. Now, he didn't really – Warnable boy too, mate. He didn't poll many Brownlow votes. I was a bit disappointed, but he can win a Norm Smith. Absolutely yeah. he can. Yeah. I just think – he he's due. He's had a great year, and I reckon uh, for me, if you were going to look at Collingwood, like Big Mason Cox, is a hundred bucks mm. for a Norm Smith. I couldn't go that way, Spot. I couldn't. And nothing against Big Mace, but I just no, I couldn't no, see but... Big Mace winning a, a Norm Smith. We're going to get to that Norm Smith market in a minute, but before we do, so you're thinking three to four goals, Brisbane, are you? That yep. that kind of tight enough margin, but they'll just have enough to get across the line. Are we thinking, Spide, 28 degrees? Are we thinking it's going to be a bit of a, a shootout? Like, are we thinking it's going to be a high-scoring game? I would have gone. I would have gone a high-scoring game. Brisbane are a high-scoring team. They will kick multiple goals. You look at their full line, uh, I just don't know where Collingwood's multiple goals. Who's going to kick up? Um, can stand up and kick five. Yep. Jimmy, if he gets a game, because we don't know what they're going to do with um, you know, a couple of players that, that you know, Gunston, if he's going to, you know, for Brisbane, if he's going to come back in. So you just, there's so many things to play. But yeah, for me, I reckon it's still going to be over, what, 160, 170 points. Well, that's what, that's the next market I want to look at, all thanks to Palmerbet. So under 65 and a half points is a dollar ninety. Over 165 and a half points a dollar ninety. So that was uh, exactly where your kind of ballpark is, Spide. So yeah. are you thinking under or over there? I'd go over. I'd yeah, go right. over. High Perfect scoring. day for football. And get worn out, easier, cheaper goals to win. And whoever gets on top, it's gonna be a it's it's they're gonna run. It's they, only like so you eleven or twelve in goals front each, isn't it? Yeah. As soon as you get your tail in front on a hot day, there's no one stopping you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So winning margin, Collingwood one to twenty four is three twenty five. Collingwood yep. twenty five plus, all thanks to Palmer Bet is three dollars thirty. Um, so that's pretty tight to be honest. Brisbane one to twenty four, which you think that's where you think spot in that little uh kind of ballpark there. That's at three sixty. So you're getting some value there. And Brisbane twenty five plus to go just a little bit more. That's at four sixty. I must admit. I think I'd have a little a bit on that. Way to play. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah. I'd have minutes. a little bit on the 460. I'd be taking Brisbane into 25 plus 
into a couple of others. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, 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 I love it, mate. Hey, in total goals, this is an interesting market too. So under 23 and a half goals is $2.07. Over 23 and a half goals is, is $1.76. So, you know, if, if you're thinking that both teams are going to kick about 12 goals each, um, which yeah. I think is pretty reasonable for the for the Ford uh, prowess that both these teams have got, um, you know, you take the dollar seventy six and, and multiply or multiply. Well, if you if you're backing to be one hundred and sixty five points, you're backing over twenty two goals. Yeah, that's it. That's it, mate. Yeah. So now, perfect conditions. Now, Spy, what about the preseason markets here? Premiership winner, so Collingwood with ten bucks, Brisbane were nine dollars at the start of the year to make the grand final. Uh, Collingwood were four dollars seventy five just to get there. Brisbane were four dollars fifty. So if you're a, if you're a diehard kind of supporter, like well, there's a there's some value there to be had at the start of the season, isn't there? Yeah, and you look, and you know we're playing the two best. This is what I love about this weekend is the two best teams made it. Yeah, the two best home spot. and away teams made yep. it. So it, it's great, and I like the able to now start looking forward to you know next year. Get over this year first, but uh, yeah, there's some great markets as you say. Looking forward to next year. Even with the brown loan stuff, it's just an interesting time to start having a look. And there's nothing better than just, you know, especially you you light up and you've had a pretty good win on whoever you're back this weekend. You've got to put a little bit in ready for next year. That's exactly right, Spide. Now, let's have a look at that Norm Smith market. I love the Norm Smith betting. I remember getting Andrew Embley uh, one year at the West Coast Eagles at about $36, Spide. And uh, I love having a bit oh, of a yeah. play on Norm oh, Smith. I, we... like, I, I like me halfback flankers and kind of wingers and stuff, you know. Well, um, I, I reckon they're the way to play. So the market. You don't have to brag the... too much then. Even last year, I had um, uh, Geelong, winger. He retired the same day. Um, gee, was he from week? Hawthorne? Yeah, Zip Smith, Isaac, Isaac Smith. Smith. He only retired yeah. last couple of weeks ago. He still stuck yeah. around for another year. Oh, he did too. Yeah, yeah. But I had him. He was a jet. Yeah, mate. They're the kind of players I reckon on Grand Final. They're going to kick you a couple of goals. They're going to get high possessions. Yeah. Uh, they're the influential players. So the market, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Nick Dacos is our favourite at four bucks. Yeah. Jordan Degoe at five fifty. He's in good nick. Lockie Neal, the Brownlow medalist, at seven dollars. Josh Dunkley. To do a job on someone, twelve bucks, and, and rack him and stack him himself. Your man, Hugh McCluggage, thirteen dollars. Scotty Pendlebury, twenty one dollars. Charlie Cameron, twenty six. Joey Danaher, twenty six. Josh Dacos, twenty six. Harris Andrews, twenty six, and Jack Crisp, twenty six. There is some value there. You would think Charlie Cameron, jo uh, Joey Danaher, uh, a few of those players are going to need to kick four or five uh, yeah. to be in contention, aren't they? Yeah, Harris Andrews I always thought was a pretty good bet. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at going. $26. Oh, that's, yeah. where I'm, that's where I'm going. He was amazing last week. He unbelievable. Done, he was he was unbelievable. And I, I reckon with no McStay, I'm worried about I reckon he's gonna just be off the leash, if you know what I mean. Like I, I yeah, just yeah. I, I reckon he's gonna be that bloke that's coming in, fisting away all day, putting his body on the line, and that is where I'm going. So I'm glad. That you, right. Right, you pointed him out, mate, at 26 bucks. I reckon he's an absolute bet. Yeah, I'm going with Cluggage. I've been on him all year. And, yeah, didn't get a lot of Brownlow votes, but he can pop up, kick a couple of goals. You can still get the 25-plus possessions. Perfect day for him. So I'm going to stick with McCluggage. I don't want to move off him. But for the for other punters out there, I think, um, you know, if you're a Collingwood fan, Pendlebury, he'd yeah, want to stand up. Absolutely. And, uh, at twenty odd dollars or what is, bucks. What, yeah, twenty one yeah, bucks. He's if he gets the footy, he just looks like he's got all the time in the world. He just looks like he makes. Well, he does. He makes stuff happen. He's a so champion. I think, yeah, I think if I was a Collingwood fan, I'd be going Pendlebury, but I'd be I'm going McCluggage. Right, oh mate. Now listen, uh, last week uh, Collingwood twenty five plus, Brisbane twenty five plus. Number for two, you're stiff, though. You know, oh, well, you weren't no. really because it was a close game with uh, with Collingwood and uh, the Giants. But Brisbane, at one stage, you would have thought, yeah, in that last quarter, they're going to kick away right here. But Carlton kept going. Uh, Joe Danaher, four plus goals. Jordan Degoe, four plus goals. Both had hu huge influences on the game. Yeah, just couldn't get the four, mate. But uh, what are we going? So Premiership winner Norm Smith, first goal scorer, same game, multi. What do you got for us, great man? Just a three leg. I'm going Brisbane. Yep. So just head to head. Head to head, Brisbane. Yep. Let's not get greedy on the big day. Yep. Good call. Into Danaher three plus. Smoking Joe to have a big day, the big fella. Smoking like Joe, it. absolutely. And McCluggage to get 20 plus. Fantastic, mate. 
That is going to get you six fifty one. That's a nice yeah. little bet, to be honest. That's that's good little keep bet. It simple. Yep. Yeah. yeah keep it, it simple, and I'll be doing a couple of little ones around kind of kind of that. I think um, you know all those all those simple little multis around about six seven bucks. Perfect little day. Put a little bit of extra in there, being the grand final, and uh, let's hope let's hope that they get up. Yeah, mate, absolutely. Uh, download that Palmer Bet app. Get involved. So many options on grand final day. And as we always say, uh, gamble responsibly and think about uh, what you're actually really gambling with and what you could uh, actually be doing with that money as well. Uh, Spy, for what it's worth, I reckon Brisbane 25 plus at 460. I'm going to have something around that and just maybe multi yeah. that into a couple of different things and some verse goal scorers and, and whatnot. So, uh, look, it is going to be a sensational day. Weather looks magnificent. Kiss, are you a big Kiss fan, Spot? Oh, I feel absolutely. Like would be. I was me for loving you. <laughs> I flew all the way over to Texas to see Kiss. Really? Oh, absolutely. Mate. You are going to be like a kid in a candy shop on the weekend, mate. And uh, seriously, uh, when you get back to the footy, it's like a cult hero's back. They love you down in Melbourne town, Spide. Uh, it is going to be a big, big few days, no doubt, for yourself, mate. Uh, I'm going to catch up with you at some stage. We're going to have a couple of beers. So make sure you come and say hi. Uh, just uh, hanging on us on the year that we've had, uh, the tips that we didn't get or whatever. Uh, but it's been a whole lot of fun, mate. It's been a sensational season, hasn't it, big fella? Yeah, it's been great, and uh, you know, for all the uh, for the punters out there, it's always a yeah you know, a tough one. You know, it's been a tough year to try and pick, and we try and look around the world to try and work out the best way to pick the two best teams. And you know what? At the end of the day, the two best teams are playing off in the grand final, and that's what I love. There's so much Hold speculation on. that goes before it, but now it is the two best teams in the AFL hitting the biggest stage on the biggest day, in perfect condition. So I couldn't think of anything better. I think everybody in the football world would absolutely agree that, you know what, the two best teams are in it. Let's fight it out to the end and see who is the greatest. I reckon it's going to be a ripping grand final too. These two teams uh, last played off in 2000. Three spot or 2002? Yeah, one. I think that's when uh, Lynchy went berserk on Wakeland. Yeah, that might have no, been. he was Port Adelaide. The next one, 2004. So I reckon it must have been 2003, yeah. mate. But it is going to be one for the ages. We must thank our sponsors, Palmer Bet, of course. Been fantastic right throughout the 2023 season. They love their sports betting in general. Uh, that is where their go-to is. Um, so make sure you get involved. Download that, that app and, uh, and open up an account today. Spider, been an absolute pleasure, big fella. I look forward to catching up this weekend. Absolutely. We'll see you this weekend. And good luck to all the punters. Enjoy this weekend. And then, you know what? When this weekend's over, it's all straight into the spring carnival. It just keeps getting <laughs> bigger and bigger and better and better. I'm loving life. <laughs> See you later, mate. Cheers. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.